Hey everybody, it's Nick. In this video, I'm going to show you Retro Color 20 by XLN Audio, also known as RC20. We're going to do a comprehensive walkthrough through this multi effects plugin. I'm really excited that it's finally come to rent to own, so you can download it for free uh, to try it for a few days. You can get the link at the top right of the screen or in the description and you can follow along with this tutorial. I'm gonna break down the entire UI and also show you how each module sounds on some loops I found on Splice, so you can follow along um, with the sounds also in the description. So the UI for RC20 is broken down into four main sections, the top section, the effects modules, the big knobs, and the master section. So the top section is here. This is where you can choose presets as well as slide the global magnitude. And one of the most important parameters in RC20 is this magnitude slider. It's gonna control all of the big knobs down here, as well as some of the master section parameters. It's gonna to go to 0% bypass, so you can quickly hear your unprocessed audio to 100% magnitude, which means all the effects are kicking in and you've got all that retro color goodness. So right below the top section are the effects modules, and we're going to go into more depth on each of these individually in one moment. So right below the effects modules are the big knobs, and these are going to control the amount of each effect applied. So it's 0%, they're bypassed. You can also turn them on uh, individually by these buttons on the top left of each knob. Last is the master section. This is gonna have dynamic and EQ controls. So you've got your input gain. You can turn on an EQ with different cuts on the low end. So we've got one with a boosted resonant peak right here and different cuts on the high end. So we've got a steeper curve option. And we've also got a tone option, which will kind of boost the high or kind of uh, tuck the high and boost the low and also a uh, width section so that's really nice get some stereo width cool so now we're going to see how these effects modules sound and how they work on different loops we've got a piano loop we also have a drum loop and a bass loop So to really test out a plugin, I recommend loading the init preset or the initialized preset. And uh, you can do that by going to the top section again. That's the preset browser. Of course, there are some really great presets preloaded here, but we can go to the init, which is going to be basically the default with everything set to zero or off and hit OK. And now you can see all these effects modules are grayed out because they're not turned on. So we're going to go from left to right which is kind of how the audio flows in RC20. We're going to turn the noise on first. And again, we're listening to this with the piano. So this is the overall noise. Notice, if, even if I turn it on and the, the big knob is down, we won't hear the noise. And so RC20 has some preset noises here. You can click on the vinyl title and then see them here, or you can click through them. They have some really nice preset noises. So let's take a listen to a few of them. The tone knob is going to be the overall kind of brightness. So it's going to emphasize more of the higher frequencies um, versus the lower frequencies. And just take a listen to that. We've got also the option to route the noise post master. So that'll come after the master section here. Next, we have the follow parameter, which will follow the input signal. So if the piano is coming in, uh, the noise will also come in and it'll decay with the piano gain as well. And then duck is almost like inverse. It will actually get out of the way of the piano. Duck sounds really great on drums. Let's take a listen to that. Lastly, all these effects modules will have a flux parameter. And that's interesting because it's not really a dry wet of anything. It actually controls some parameters under the hood. So parameters we can't necessarily control on the UI. This is straight from the manual. It adds all kinds of organic and nonlinear fluctuations under the hood, customized specifically for each module. So I find that's a really good parameter to use when sound designing, especially when you're at the end of the process or going through presets really quickly.
So you can hear some randomized uh, volume and kind of dropouts when the flux is high versus it's very consistent without the flux parameter. So definitely mess with those flux parameters on all the effects modules. Next, we have the wobble module. And this is a really powerful one. I'm going to turn it on, just solo it. I would say the most important parameter is the wow to flutter slider. And wow is going to be a slower pitch modulation. So this is going to modulate the incoming pitch. And wow is going to modulate a little slower. So look, it visually kind of shows you. We can control the rate of the wow here below it. But notice at 4 hertz, it's still not that fast. Versus if we go straight to the 100% flutter, the, the slowest is 6 hertz. It goes really fast. The point is, though, we can, you know, blend between the two. And that's what's really interesting. When you get, like, somewhere I love, kind of closer to the wow side. So now when we move the wow slider to the flutter end, we're going to mix the modulation, as you can see. That was a little over-exaggerated for the example. Musically, I think that's a little distracting. So I would take the, again, big knob down a little bit to make it sound a little better. Stereo will actually separate the wow and flutter in the, between the left and right channels. And a really cool trick is if you take the mix. So mix is actually unprocessed versus processed audio. So this will actually be completely dry. Uh, but mix, when we do that and do like say 50%, we'll get a chorus effect if we have stereo. In. Let's hear what the flux engine does. Sounds like kind of, it actually sounded a little filtered, like the wobble might have been only doing a specific frequency, which may be under the hood. So the next effects module is the distort module. And this is one of my favorites. It gives you six different distortion types and a frequency parameter to kind of focus where you want the distortion to apply and a dry wet. So it's pretty simple, uh, but it's very effective and the actual sound quality is phenomenal. So let's take a listen to that on the piano with the mix up and let's take a listen to the different distortion types. Now, I think this is really effective when you do focus it in on a specific frequency. So maybe not the too low end, but you know, some of the low mids and on the high end can sound a little harsh. Let's see what the flux parameter does. So it definitely sounds like some like random volume modulation or some, um, you know, uh, distortion amount. I'm hearing some fluctuation there. Let's hear the distortion on the drums. And let's now hear some distortion on the bass. Right, so the next effects module is the digital module. And this actually simulates technologies throughout the years uh, by giving us control of the sample rate and the bit depth. And that's kind of the uh, slider we have at the very top of this. We have a frequency parameter on the left-hand side, which will allow us to control where we want to crush the audio, if you will. And let's take a listen to that 
uh, with the piano here. So if I want to add a little crystal like crunch to the top, uh, I might just use this frequency slider and have it, this is definitely doing this uh, sample rate. So if we actually use the smooth parameter here, this will allow us to smooth out the curves and therefore giving us a softer tone. And listen to this as we drag the rate to bit slider. So that's a perfect kind of, or that's a balance between the two. And as we get all the way to the bits end, this is going to be a bit depth reduction and this is going to then kind of make us the volume kind of all crazy so let's listen but that's the sample so that's really just crushing it on the sample rate and here's the bit depth so in general you can hear that bit depth is going to just be like really really a full wall of like harsh noise there is also a cut option on the frequency slider which will cut out the frequencies outside of this range. Versus focus on. And you can see the flux parameter kind of randomizes the rate and the bit. You can see it visually in the top part of the effects module. Cool, so let's hear that on some drums. So you, that's a really fun way to make something really 8-bit very quickly. So let's move on to the next effects module, which is the space module. And this is a reverb slash resonator effect. The most important parameter here at the top is the decay, and that is the length of the reverb slash resonator tail. And then we also have the similar focus slider on the left, which is going to be which frequencies we want to focus that in. So if we only want it on the top end, we would do it like this versus the, the full frequency spectrum. We've got a pre-delay, which is going to let us put amount of, a little space before the reverb starts to kick in. Um, and then the stereo, which is on by default. Um, so let's take a listen to that on the piano. Cool, let's hear that on the drums. Let's hear that as well on the bass. Yeah, and you wouldn't normally put a lot of reverb on the bass. So the last effects module is the magnetic effects module. And this is to simulate the kind of the quirky stuff that happens when you record to tape. And we've got the where to flutter knob at the top, which is the most important parameter. Uh, the where is how many times you've played it. And that can cause inconsistent like volume fluctuations. And the flutter is actually a faster artifact that's caused by the pin of the tape mechanism. We have the stereo option below it, which is similar to the other functions where we can turn that on and off. So that'll be mono or stereo by default. And then we have the rate of the flutter on the very right, which is from 6 hertz to 30 hertz. And then the dropout parameter, which is similar to the wear, but a little bit more random. And it just kind of drops out the volume. So let's take a listen to that.
let's take a listen to that on the drums. And lastly, let's take a listen to that on the bass. Awesome. So those were the effects modules. So now I'm going to combine all the effects modules. Again, they're meant to be combined and uh, balanced out on the piano layer. So let's take a listen how we could do that also using the master section. So on the piano, we're going to just start again. We've learned with the noise, find a noise type. I don't want the ducking too much. Don't want the flux too much. Then we'll introduce the wobble. And I remember we liked it around there. Way too much distortion, so we'll take that down. A little digital. Space will be nice on a piano, obviously. And let's take the magnet it a little bit. So let's take the EQ and turn that on and get a little low cut. With it. Let's A, B it using the magnitude slider at the very top. Awesome. So lastly, I have a work in progress where I've used RC20 on a group of melodic instruments. And this is a good way to see how you can use RC20 on like a group or a bus of tracks. Awesome. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, turn on that notification bell. We'll be releasing new videos weekly. Leave a comment letting us know what other plugin you would like us to take a deep dive into and kind of walk through like this. As always, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe, stay healthy, stay positive, and I'll see everyone next time. Later, y'all.